and welcome to this video about electricity and electric current to be more exact. These are the objectives of the video and some keywords that you're going to come across during the video. And we're going to start by looking at what electric charge is. And for that, we need to know about the structure of an atom. An atom is made up of three types of particle, the first of which is the electron, which is found around the outside of the atom. The electron has negative charge. Then in the centre of the atom, we have a nucleus, which contains protons with positive charge, and neutrons, which are neutral or have no charge at all. It's important that we know that the electrons are around the outside, because that's what moves when we charge something up. So, how do we get something positively or negatively charged? Let's look at a plastic rod and a cloth. Both of these things start out neutral, so they've got an equal number of protons and electrons, or positive and negative charges, and we'll represent those with pluses and minuses. Now when we rub the rod with the cloth, some of the electrons transfer from the cloth onto the rod. And the result of that is that the rod has gained electrons and the cloth has lost electrons. So the rod becomes negatively charged and the cloth becomes positively charged. Now alternatively, we could find that we have to transfer the other way. So the electrons move from the rod to the cloth. And in that case, the rod will have less electrons than it had previously and the cloth more electrons. So the rod becomes positively charged and the cloth becomes negatively charged. Now it's really important to remember that only electrons can move because they're the ones that are on the outside of the atom. The protons are stuck where they are. So electrons can be lost or gained, but it's only electrons that can move. Okay, moving on. What happens when we've got two charged objects interacting? Let's start by looking at two positively charged objects. They repel from each other because they've got the same charge, so they get pushed apart from each other. The same goes if you've got two negatively charged objects. They're going to repel because they've got the same charge. If you have a positive and a negative charged object, though, they're going to attract each other and get pulled together because of that opposite charge. The area around a charged particle is known as its electric field, and that's where things can experience the electric force. We draw the electric field using field lines. And the field lines show how strong the field is. So if the field lines are closer together, that says that the field is really strong, and if they're far apart, then that means that it's a weaker field. So as we move away from this particle, the field gets weaker. Okay, looking now at electric circuits, and you need to know various circuit symbols, so starting with a bulb, a cell, a battery, which is made up of more than one cell put together, an ammeter, which is a device used for measuring electric current, a voltmeter, which is used to measure the voltage, a resistor, which is used to reduce the current through a circuit, a switch, which turns your circuit on and off, and a variable resistor which is used to change the electric current in the circuit. A series circuit is a circuit with one loop. So you can have as many components as you like in there, but it can only be one loop to be a series circuit. A parallel circuit is made up of more than one loop. So we draw our first loop in, and then any more components we add as separate loops. Okay, so more than one loop makes it a parallel circuit. So what is electric current? Electric current is the rate of flow of charge, so it's the movement of electrons through the circuit. We need to know how that works in series and parallel circuits. So we start here with a series circuit. Now, in a series circuit, there's only one path that current can flow down. So the result of that is that the current is the same wherever in that circuit you measure it. In a parallel circuit, there's more than one route that the current can go down. So as the current gets to 
a point where the circuit branches it has to split so we start with two amps there but only one amp is going to go through each of our two branches then it joins up to two amps again afterwards okay so if you add more components in a series circuit what happens to the current is it gets less because it's harder for the electricity to get through that circuit easily but if you add more branches in parallel the current can be going down multiple routes at the same time so if you added up all of those branches, the currents in all of them, the total current increases. Okay, the last thing we need to know in this video is about turning circuit diagrams into circuits. So here's a series circuit. We've got two bulbs and an ammeter in this circuit, and that's connected up to a battery. So how would we draw that using circuit symbols? Well, we'd start by drawing in our cell or battery and then draw a wire that went to the first bulb, then to the second bulb, and then back round to an ammeter, which then was connected to the power supply. A parallel circuit here, we've got two bulbs and a battery in parallel. So we're gonna to have to draw in the two separate loops. Again, we start off by drawing our cell or battery, and then we draw the rest of the first loop. We always draw the inner loop first, and then we add in the extra outer loop. And we can do that for as many loops as we need to. Thank you for watching. Bye.